talk about Varian. I finally got back from BlizzCon. I've had some time to play him at BlizzCon and on the BTR now. So I have a good idea of where he is at as a hero, I believe. So today I wanted to go over the builds that I believe are the strongest for him. There's two different builds. I'll only be playing one in my gameplay. But I wanted to talk about basically which two builds I think are the strongest for this hero at the moment. Um, the first build is going to be his tank build. We'll quickly go over the talents and why we take them. So the first talent we're going to take is Overpower. This is going to give us a heroic strike when we parry a basic attack. So for the most part, when you're playing tank, you're going to be charging in. And when you block or parry or whatever, you'll be able to heroic strike twice, right? And with the taunt talent, you're going to lose attack speed, but that doesn't mean you that you lose damage. So getting more heroic strikes off is going to allow you to like 1v1 and win duels. So overall, I think I really like this talent on taunt as you're basically guaranteed to get hit by the enemy as you will be the tank for your team. The second talent that I want to talk about is the level four talent. There's two choices here, but I think that it's pretty obvious which one is most important, and that's going to be Warbringer. They've actually buffed this since the BlizzCon version of this hero. At BlizzCon, it was a 0.75 second stun, and it was only reduced by 8 seconds. But here now, we have a 1 second stun, and it's reduced by 10 seconds. This means we have a 6 second cooldown, 1 second stun spell that is targetable. Um... That's insane. That's like what I think is going to make this hero broken is this Warbringer talent. Like being able to just stun and then have Tron to follow you up and carry in combo behind you and not be able to miss it is just really powerful. The one thing is that you can stun it while he's charging at you like ETC slide. So you do kind of have that going for you, but that's it really. So on tank, I'm going to always take Warbringer. Uh, looking at the level 7 talents now, there are two that we could go. There's actually all three of these we could go. More parries is really powerful, but it gives you more heroic strike. The other team is really auto attack based. This talent's not terrible. Second wind is really powerful uh, on maps where you're going to be fighting off of the wave, which would be like Towers of Doom or something, uh, because this is where most of your sustain is going to come from. But on maps like Towers of Doom and Curse Hall and stuff, I, I actually think Rush, Victory Rush could be very good on this tank build because you could soak the wave. And then, you know, this way you can basically absorb damage from the enemy team while wave clearing. So when you're going middle, bot, middle, bot, middle, bot, every time you trade, if you take Victory Rush, you should come out ahead, right? So I'm going to probably try Victory Rush today just for the sake of experimenting. Looking at the level 10 options, this is where like Varian basically chooses which role he wants to play. And for us, when we go to tank build, we're going to go taunt. And this is going to give us a 1.25 second taunt, which is essentially like a stun. Um, increase our maximum health and decrease our attack speed. So we don't lose any damage here. We do get bonus health. And we get an additional stun now. So on top of our charge right when we charge in this stuns them for one second you can see it above their head right now we can chain these so we can charge in then taunt then slow okay so we have three forms of cc now right so we stun we taunt then we slow this should hopefully be enough that your team kills the person right or if your team's a follow-up team, you can stun, then taunt, and stand still, and then slow. Okay, so it's basically what you're going to be doing a lot of the time on this hero. Maybe you know, maybe open with a slow into a charge, but for the most part, like you, what you don't want to do, and what like a lot, a lot, a lot of players, like maybe like silver and down, will do, is they'll go something like that, right? They'll like they'll chain every one of their abilities together. You want to, if you taunt, you taunt, and then you stun on the outside of it. And the game's introduced, like, a bar that you can see. So you don't even have to time it. You just have to time it with the bar. 
right? And obviously when you're getting your parries, you can like charge in probably parry, probably three parry and heroic strike like three times during all of this. Right? So tank build's pretty cool. Um, looking at the 13 taunt, we're gonna take banner of Ironforge. This is gonna decrease the damage that the enemy deals to you within the banner. So like now <coughs> when you charge in, you wanna like charge, taunt and then like maybe put the banner somewhere behind you where your team's at or if you're running away to that's where the banner is not not like you don't want a banner like here right because then this person could just kill it and you don't want a banner there because then you're put bannering into their team so you kind of want a banner between like where you are and where your team is and, and in a safe position you can also do it like you know if you're fighting here you can like Put it up there and then you have the all this mission you can you can hide them too right like that's i guess what i'm trying to say here is like you can hide them behind or in brushes things like that uh so make sure to use your banners when the fight starts too like you saw here with me like i'll charge and then banner back here nothing changes about what i'm doing right like so you should be able to like oh, okay we're fighting banner down ready to go i'm tanking damage right um at 16 we have tons of different options here if they have like heavy healing like a medic mortal strike or Rhaegar, you know mortal strike is going to do a lot of work um if they have a tacitar or something shattering throw is great and for everything else just take charge this does six percent of the target's health on every six seconds every time you charge you do like Let's see how much this does to an Arthas. So let's just look at his health bar, right? Like a good couple chunks of that bar. And that's every six seconds. So I really like this talent. I think Juggernaut's really powerful. It's like giant killer, essentially. But you also do damage outside of it. So um, so now looking at 20, there's two different options here. If they have like Illidan or something, Tychus, Tracer, these heroes are going to get destroyed by this talent. When you get hit by a basic attack, your taunt is decreased, the cooldown of it. So that's really powerful if, again, they have a fast attacking hero, Zarya, for example. Otherwise, if they're doing a lot of burst, I think demoralizing shots where you want to go. This is going to decrease the damage that your team has dealt or that the enemy team deals by 25% for five seconds. So now, like, if I chart, if I jump in, taunt, demoralizing, and drop banner, they can only deal 50% of their damage to me like and my team so it's not just me it's me and my team right so really powerful stuff coming out this is going to be this is going to close up for the tank build again remember with this hero if you're playing this build it's like charge then taunt then slow on the end right and if you're full engaging you remember charge parry ward shout taunt you want to do it all like i can't talk it like all right let's see if i can do it real quick So we, there it is, something like that. Charge, it's a lot, it's a lot of buttons, it's a lot of buttons. So practice this too, this is, this is something that like, I need to be able to do without thinking about, you know? And the more I practice it, the better I'll get at that. So this is Tank Varian. We're now gonna go in and talk about DPS variant. So to start DPS variant, the first quest that we're gonna go with is High King's quest. Overpower no longer will mean anything because we're gonna take the dual swords. So refreshing heroic strike, you're already gonna be doing that. This is going to increase your auto attack and you're gonna be auto attacking a lot. It is a hard talent to get done in some cases, but it's the best tier because it scales the best with your build. Um, now looking at the enemy like team, this is where these two talents are going to come into play I do really love Warbringer, but if the enemy team's engaging onto you I actually think shield wall is pretty powerful with this build because you can negate a lot of the enemy's cooldowns and damage And you essentially win most 1v1s. You still have the ability to charge So it just depends if you're going into the enemy team, you know, then you want to go Warbringer But if they're engaging into you like a Kerrigan, for example, then you want to go Shield Wall. I think it's pretty flexible here um, because you can still slow off of your E. So 
we'll just take shield wall for just this this showing but when when i go into game it'll change um at level seven we're gonna obviously take second win this is the talent that allows us to solo bosses um it still allows us to be somewhat illidan like because we can just sustain and attack so fast and heal so much there's really no other choice at this talent tier um we now have twin blades of fury this is as you can see we now are kind of illidan -y. we can attack you know twice as fast or 100 percent as fast right and we get bonus move speed and every three hits we're gonna crit hook strike okay so what does this do this allows us to literally solo the boss and remember you can parry you can parry the boss too so but once you get this you yeah you can essentially solo the boss there's like you start losing health but when you hit 50 percent your talent takes over where 50% of your damage you deal heals you right here you'll see and you're just gonna flatline at 50 and the boss can never push you past this so the enemy team would ha obviously have to show up right here and try to kill you but it's insane that this hero at level 10 can just solo the boss I think that's like really something powerful that he brings to the table um, with this with this build too it really depends on where you want to go at but I think resistance is better. Move speed, it's good. It doesn't stack with this, I don't think. Um, we can try it really quick, actually. So when I have this, my move speed is 130. Still 130, see? So you're kind of anti-synergizing with yourself with this ward. But you do give your team move speed, so... I would say Banner of Ironforge is the best here, just for the sake of, um, you know, strengthening yourself. Think of it as a resistance key on a Sonya, right? Like a hardened shield or something, a little mini one. So when you're hitting, you know, then you drop the hardened shield, right? Uh, so that that I would probably take Banner of Ironforge here for that reason in particular. Um, at 16, Mortal Strike is really good. You basically keep 100% up Mortal Strike on the enemy. Juggernaut is still powerful. Not as powerful if we don't take the 4 talent. So if you don't take 4, I'd probably get Mortal Strike or Shattering Throw, depending on the enemy team. Um, so I'll just take Mortal Strike for now. And then at 20, you go Frenzy, which is going to give you more movement speed and more attack speed. So it's just like an overall, like, yeah, you're, you're getting more buffed, right? Now, like, it's even hard to, like, A-step with this hero because you attack so fast. Yeah, you attack so much faster, I, can't, I can hardly A-step with him. Sweet. Yeah, so that is the Illidan build. This is the Illidan build. Again, no Iron Forge at 20, I mean at 13. But this is about the build that you would want to go if you're playing the melee assassin version of Varian. Um, I do have like a, a Colossus Smash build and I might make another video about it later on. But these are the two builds that I want to talk about now for people to give them a general idea of how they want to be playing Varian in the two different styles. Um, and we'll go more into the Colossus build I think in another video when the Varian's released. As I think it's the fun build, but I don't know if it's the most effective. But we're going to jump now into some gameplay, and I'll see you guys then. Okay, guys. So we're hopping into this game. We are going to be trying out Tank Varian on this map. Should be, should be interesting. We have actually a really good team for Braxis. Uh, but I, I really want to try out the Tank build on this map in particular to try to utilize Victory Rush at level 7. So we should be getting a lot of Victory Rush procs off, right? And we should be able to sustain and trade damage pretty well for that reason. Uh, but we're hopping into the game now. I mean, I'm more or less just going to stun the Illidan over and over. Ooh, this mount looks really nasty. 
Um, and Overpower is going to be really good against their team, right? So let's see if we can get some sound changes going. For some reason, I have voices on. I never play with voices on. What's that? Uh, let's zero solo, maybe. Nah, you do it. I think Zara's a fine solo laner. We can always rotate. So the one thing about the spike here on Varian is like it's obviously gonna come at level ten and four. Four if for the stun and then ten for when you get the extra health. So I have to be I have to be careful about that. And when I when I engage, more or less I want to charge and then get the slow off. So there I charged. Oh yeah, I don't need to uh, parry that because I can only parry audio attacks. <clears throat> but we are winning this trade. Another important note that a lot of people don't know is you can parry, like, ammo. Uh, the only thing is if you parry, like, four and keep shots, you, like, watch, ready? See? And then it said, like, I blocked damage. Oh, this guy might be dead. Uh, he is. Uh, the only thing is if you parry, like, keep and fort shots, then you actually get slowed and, like, your attack speed slowed. But you don't, um, you don't actually take any of the damage, so. Oh, I should get a double kill here. Oh! Nice. We'll get this globe. I saw the tap. See if Gul'dan wants it. Gul'dan? He's not paying attention. Oh, rip. She baited. Yeah, you can actually like really bait people with this hero though because of uh, parry. So now, we, so now we have the decreased cooldown and charge. So we really want to charge and then slow on the end of that. And now like our charge is back up. Should be able to kill this guy. Try to get the body box. Zara is coming too. He's like done. He's right here. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about being able to stun someone every six seconds that feels strong. Uh, I'm gonna have to full back. I have no tap, so. Well, when I get back, we should be able to win this fight. I'll be full health and stuff. And I, I should be able to sustain, like, a ton of damage at 7 as well. Because of Heroic Strike. Oop. I gotta work on my parries. <laughs> I feel like sometimes I just parry when I feel like I'm taking damage. Come in, Golden. This guy should be dead. Yep. How's Top doing? I'm gonna go help Top. Their whole team's rotated up there.
He's gonna Vorpal. I don't think he doesn't have blink, so he should be dead. So there's three up here. I think they're pushing bot for basically free right now. Should be able to kill this other Uh, nice. They have double shrine though for that. That Zul slowing my attack speed. It's gonna be really funny when I get to Tank Town too, because I'm gonna be attacking like. Ugh, I can only imagine now. I killed both people bot. Who, who's down there? Varian? Varian Monk? Xeratol. Okay, so we'll wait till they come up here, I guess, and then try to kill them. I assume that we'll see them show up top. Maybe not. Maybe they just do the camp. Yeah, here it is. Alright, Lin is not attacking me. Oh, big chunk. Alright, so I lost my little bit of attack speed. But I gained a shield. And taunt. Looks like we're gonna win this. We have the Sylvanas too. I was gonna say, if he still comes, I'll taunt him. You can use your E there, like you saw, like to escape. So it doesn't always have to be offensive. No. Oh. No, no, well. Rip. Sylvanas is top. I only have a wave bot too. Sylvanas. I'm gonna go down though. Should be alright. Top damage? Pretty good. I feel like I'm slaying most of the people this game though. Should be like easy kills. I might be able to protect cooldown. Nice heal. I should still be able to protect him. That's what I'm talking about. The taunt and then on the tail end stun. So OP. Yeah, Victory Rush is actually put in a ton of work this game too. You see the zero? He's right here. Where did the Zeratul go? I just saw him. Drop the ward. So everyone now has resistance. Should still attack. Nice, alright. This feels, I feel like really strong. I can't decide if, you know, because it's on PTR, but. Locking someone up for 2.25 seconds is pretty insane. Especially since it's just me. Like, imagine if you add another chain to the CC or something. Like, I can only imagine how good he'll be in competitive games, you know? And you can parry, you can parry mercs too, you can parry bosses. Like, just for science, I'll show you the parry on boss. Like, boss shouldn't hit me if I parry it. Ready? Let's see. Blocked. 
I don't actually want to do the boss. I think we might be able to do it right now, but I don't. I don't. Yeah, we probably could have done it though. I'm trying to get some kills top. So I'm gonna aggressively ward here because we are chasing. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, good VP. But yeah, like Tyrandum, Tyranda with Mark and Stun follow up after you, you like go in on Varian. Oh man, or like even Kerrigan, you could take this guy with Kerrigan because at level four he gets his stun on charge, so you get your spike then, right? I really like this skin as well. I think it's just the the with the two handers, it's really cool because he gets an axe as his second weapon. All right, so we see Illidan going top. I just want to try to control these two. This might be GG because of Sylvanas. The best part about the taunt, oh shit, Zertal, is that when you taunt them and you parry, they have to attack you, right? So you get overpowered stacks on level one. That's so sick. That's so, it seems really unfair actually. So this game will go, hmm, I think we can just go Juggernaut, honestly. Just increase our damage. At this point, it's hard to say like how strong the hero is. Their team's so far ahead. <laughs> but the one thing that I did learn from this game is like tank build with victory rush on this map actually works really well. The victory rush especially works really well. He does kind of have mana issues. But I don't think that they're terrible. But I do see myself running out of mana. Uh oh. Seven side is tried. Uh, rip. I just ate a whole seven sided strike. Gross. Not GG yet. The other team said not today. I think this guy went Lion's Fang damage. He did. I don't. I'm not a huge fan of that build. What in the? I think Karazim thinks that he's Varian with level 10 twin flings and the life in the game life game. Uh oh, Gildan's dead. Oh god, we, they, they've, they're closing this level gap, that's for sure. Maybe they'll make the, they, they heard that uh, making a video so they want to make it a little more interesting, even though the core's at 39%. Let's see if we can get a pick here, should be able to. I think someone's gonna go top to defend. Trying maybe here. That was a good, that was a really good freaking VP. Oh my goodness. Four man VP. Whenever there's a fight happening though, I always drop my totem. Like immediately. This guy should be dead. Oh, the bomb though. That was a clean fight. My heels in. I'm gonna go after Illidan. God, that's so insane. That's gonna be so frustrating to play against. 
It's every six seconds, too. And then every 25 on time. Like, the fact that you get two crits on overpower, level one, when you taunt, is just so insane. So, that is going to be it for tank variant. I'll show you guys the build real quick before I end the video. Just go over some last second. So, on this map, we did try the victory rush, and it turned out really well. If we had gotten to 20, we would have gone dim demoro shout. Uh... Iron Forge Banner is really good. I think you really could take the movement speed as well if you need more chase. So it goes both ways, but I do like this because it gives you a bit more tankiness. I guess the mobility, it would add more mobility so you could kite away maybe with the other talent. Um, yeah, and the overpower synergizes really well with taunt. When you taunt, if you if you parry, they have to attack you so you get overpower heroic strike crits. And then Juggernaut just for increased damage. Honestly, there was no reason for mortal strike. They didn't have a lot of healing and they didn't have a lot of shields. Uh, but that's going to be it for the video today, guys. Thank you all so much. If you did enjoy yourself, make sure to throw a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can always check me out below uh, on my Twitch and Twitter, which I'll have in the description as well. Appreciate it, guys, again so much. Thanks for checking out my videos, and I will see you all next video. Peace. All right, guys, so we are going to be hopping into this game. Now we are taking the Illidan build. This is going to be the Illidan build because it tacks fast. It has built-in sustain. And we're going to try that out. We get to really showcase Mortal Strike this game because they do have the L2 on their team. So Mortal Strike is going to get a ton of value, I think. Um, and it is on Curse Hollow, so I can solo the boss immediately at level 10 once we hit level 10. So there's a lot of good things going on here. I'm trying to figure out what's happening with these Blizz Brawler accounts. But this has to be someone that's like... I don't know, they're both level 40. It's interesting. I'm confused by that but yeah i think the auto build should do a lot of work here the only problem is my team doesn't have a tank so that could be problematic but at level one we're going to take high king's quest it's going to synergize well with twin blades of fury at level 10. because they have some bursts with zero tool i might try shield wall this game it's just so hard to give up uh, a six second click and point, point and click stun. It's really hard to give that up. But we'll see. Medic so dead. All right, one we got one down, one down on her. We need five more kills to go. Remember, you can cue the wave like that, just like with any skill shot that goes through minions to push for damage. And not having a tank could be problematic this game. Because they do actually have a lot of range damage. But range damage isn't too bad for me because of my parry. If I parry correctly. I do want to start working on my... I want to start working on my... Oh, did he blink back? Okay. Working on my like hits on heroes. And I haven't gotten any globes yet. So I guess I've gotten maybe two. Oh, just one now. So I'll hop between mid and bot, just try to gather globes. Really should just, oh, we might be able to kill this guy. Oh, not with a medic. Maybe. Remember you can parry the tower shots. It's really important there. I, I think I probably saved myself from like 600 damage. Ah. Come 
minds. Okay, so we'll we'll, we'll get full health because I, I don't want to tap just yet. I want to have my tap up. I am going to take Warbringer. This way, if I get on to Medic, I should just instantly kill her with Warbringer. Shield wall is good, but like, I think shield wall is better against ma mage damage. All right, so imagine like with a Li Ming, she throws her orb at you and you know it's going to hit you. And then you parry. And then you basically just ate a Li Ming orb, right? In this case, like I have two heroes that are going to be auto attacking me. So parry is already essentially getting the value out of it that it wants to. Oh, shoot. <laughs> he could come back to me. So the objectives just spawn any second. That's, that, that is the latest spawn time for the objective 250. Let's see if we can maybe kill medic mid. This scouting drone counters their tool is actually pretty hilarious. Good lord, so much damage. We can get to, we can get on this medic now, I think. That's so good, man, with the follow-up route and stuff. Good gosh. All right, so second win is, like, one of the key parts to the Illidan build. This is, like, essentially going to give this guy Illidan's passive. Like, when he autos, he kills. The hammer did no damage to me because of, because of what's it called? Parry. Uh oh, this is not looking good. Uh oh, <laughs> may have gone a little hard. May have gone a little hard. Next time though, I'll have, I'll have ten. I think level ten will be a big deal. I might have actually lived there with the level ten talent. So you heal so much when you're below fifty percent because the second one. One thing about this hero too is he's pretty terrible at jungling until he gets his second blade or his twin blades. So I don't see myself doing that or him doing jungle until that, that point. All right, so we actually have a spawn top. I need to rotate. But I do like really like the synergy with like Malfurion and you know, we might see Earthquake Thrall. Uh oh. That passive proc. Oh, so close. What the? If we don't get the medic, we won't ever kill this guy, though, I don't think. Oh, what if we kill both of them? Should be able to kill Hammer, even. Alright, so now we get Twin Blades. I'm just gonna go right to doing boss. There's just no reason not to just do it. <laughs> so at 50, uh, that's when basically you flatline and like the boss no longer deals damage because you get bonus healing at 50. Alright, so I'll, I like basically flatline heal right here. Kind of like Artanis when he sold the jungle. And obviously, oh, there's his area here. This is not good. He's stream sniping. What a loser. <clears throat> Get the fuck off me. Sorry for the cursing. There's someone stream sniping me right now. I'm making this video while streaming. Carry that. Well 
So I'll just push with this. Should be curse. Might even be able to end the game. Oh, too much CC. Did he end up taking taunt? No. So you cannot 1v4. That we did learn. We'll take a resistance banner now. So I could have taken, hmm, I could have taken block for the Zeratul. To block all his magic damage. But I don't think it was necessary. We are four levels up now. He does, he did go taunt, this guy did. This is pretty good VP again. That third heroic strike crit heal is so much help when you're below 50%. Oh, it's so strong. Four levels up, I think, is a big deal, too, though. The earthquake. Mortal Strike now. Should be able to just do the boss. It's like insane that he does basically what Illidan does, but better. Doesn't actually make any sense. And he has like a parry. Like look. like a slaughter in this game man
So, I think looking at it, he feels really good at 10. Um, and I say that, but like at 4, he also gets a spike with his stun. So, he actually seems like fairly strong throughout the game. I could see you going this build on a map like this, like where jungling and stuff is really powerful. I don't really know how well this does in a team fight. Or how well this does is like a protect the X comp, right? He does have a lot of sustain when he goes below 50%. So I can imagine like Tash shields on this would be really powerful. Um, but this is going to be the Illidan build. Um, again, if you guys enjoyed this, please make sure to throw a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can always check me out on my Twitch and Twitter, which will both be located below. Uh, this is going to be the attack speed Illidan build. One more time looking at the talents. Basically the same thing, sort of. We took Mortal Strike to counter the Morales. And I think you can take Shield Wall at four if you want to protect yourself from Burst. But other than that, yep, that's going to be it. So I'll see you guys all in the next video. Cheers.